Well, welcome to 7 for 12 with Steve Harmison and myself, John Norman. And, well, that's pretty disappointing, isn't it? Uh, you wait 144 years for a World Test Championship final. Uh, number one against number two. And then it rains. I suppose that's what happens when you play in England. Anyway, uh, that's not to say that we haven't got plenty to talk about today. Uh, don't forget, like, subscribe, review, comment. Steve Harmison will answer everything. And that's what you're listening to. 7 for 12 with Steve Harmison. Well, Harmy, that was uh, a little bit, as I say, um, uh, disappointing. The, the weather forecast in this country is terrible, so I never, ever, ever believe it. But for once, it uh, proved to be true. Uh, a washout at the Aegeus Bowl. So we uh, we didn't get a toss. We don't know the team. Well, we do know the India team. Um, we don't know the New Zealand team. Um, and so it, it leaves us in a position um, where we've had to change tax slightly. Um, and uh, one of the things that we were talking about off air, I was just idling and talking to you and I'll say, oh, what was it like to bowl against uh, Sir of Ganguly? What was it like to bowl against Sachin Tendulkar? What was the dressing room? How would they used to talk about uh, having to face Zaheer Khan? Uh, so uh, so we thought we'd talk about that. Yeah, and it, it is. It's disappointing that we didn't get any any start of the uh, the World Test Championship because I think it was all set to be an absolute humdinger. But when you're talking about humdingers and proper sides, I've gone down the road of picking the best side I played against. Not the best side in India, uh, but the best side that Steve Harmison played against um, during my time. My test debut was against India in 2002. I played against India in 2006. I played one day against India when they came over just before the Champions Trophy, I think in 2004. 2006 in India and 2008 in India. Um, and here are the 11 players that I thought were the best that I came up across. Well, I tell you what, when we were talking about this before, the first name that I suggested uh, would be in that 11 is, wasn't Sachin, wasn't Ganguly. Uh, he still gives me nightmares. It's got to be Verenda Sawak. Yeah, you had to get him early. You had to get Verinda Sewag early. In England, you had a little bit more of a chance for a little bit longer period. Um, but if you didn't get him early, boy, you made it count. And the one innings that just typifies Verinda was the Chennai. The Chennai 2008 Test match will crop up a lot yeah. in this because of the, the fourth innings and the way they came. I managed That's to play the one that still gives me nightmares. It does. It gives me nightmares as well for the wrong reasons. Um, not for, you know, I get them good reasons as well because of what... Yeah, you can't have a nightmare for a good reason, Harmy. That's well, the point I of can on, I can on this, did. I can on this, this on Chennai 2008 because even though it gives me bad nightmares, it gives me the good ones at the same time without being contradictive because we went back <laughs> for a reason of terror, the terrorist attack. And that for me, you know... Fair enough. Going back like that was, was a good thing and it was the right thing to do. And the Indian people, I think, benefited... Just a small amount for the the, the joy that that fourth innings came and Verinda Sirwag took us to town. He took us. Me and Jimmy Anderson didn't know what day it was. You know, we bowled a ninety mile an hour extra sets out. So we bowled a touch wide, but he kept uppercutting me over the top of backward point for six. And we put two men back on a fence, and he just kept hitting it over the top of them. He was a ridiculous player. I managed to play alongside Verinda in the World Eleven game. In Australia, what a lovely man! What a fantastic man! Alongside Raul Dravid in that in that team, but Seawag at the top of the order. Was he uh, as or is he as uncomplicated a person as he appeared to be? Uh, as uncomplicated uh, as a batsman, see ball, hit ball, kind of thing. Yeah, he seemed to be. Yeah, he loved a, a laugh and a joke when you when when I played alongside him. Um, in in Australia, but he was. It was just simple. If you could, if you could manage to get him, yeah, in and around the sort of chest, yeah, sort of throat area, because his hands followed the ball. I think there was a game in Ahmedabad. I got him. I managed to sort of bounce him out, and that was the way I was trying to go with him. But if you didn't get him early, the ball didn't bounce as much, and then all of a sudden he came into his own and he cashed in and he went hard at you. And if he got in, boy, he took the game away from you. you know, some of the some of the strokes he played. I remember somebody telling us a story about Leicester, and they were saying, "What happens if you've got a reverse swinging ball?" You know, Leicester dressing room asking him for little 
snippets at face and reverse swing. He just said, try and hit it out of the park, get it changed, and they'll bowl with the one that's not reverse swinging. That was Verinda Simple, but he was a fantastic player. OK, so he was pretty obvious, but um, possibly less so. His opening partner in the Steve Harmison uh, India playing eleven. So Wazim Jaffa uh, is his opening is the opening partner of Verinda Sayway. What was uh, what were the challenges that you uh, came across trying to bowl to him? Yeah, he was a top player. Was Wazim Jaffa? I wasn't sure. The, there was two. There was two spots, two or three spots. I, I really struggled with getting into this eleven. Um, because we probably weren't household, the, the, the big household names like Sachin or, or Raul. But and when you look at it, I thought Wazim Jaffa was a fantastic player. He absorbed the game very, very well. Good foil for Verinda Sirwag. Uh, played against him on my debut. And also in the, uh, I think the first test in Nagpur when Alistair Alistair Cook made his debut. Wazim Jaffa got 81 in the first innings, 100 in the second innings. He was a real thorn in the side of, just trying to get to trying to get Sachin or trying to get Raul in and out before the ball stops moving, which opened up the the, the, the middle order, exposed that middle order. I thought Wasim Jaffa was a very very good player at you know just 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 taking the game, slowing the game down and absorbing the game. He was a very very good player. Okay, let's go to number three. So back in 2002, it was my, it was your first uh, tour um, against India or your first series against India. And it was my first tour in the, in, in the cricket industry. I was working for uh, Channel 4's website, doing the old desktop Richie. Um, and uh, I worked out at the end of that series that I'd spent over 24 hours watching Rahul Dravid bat. Um, and I told that to you a few months ago. And you replied, well, I spent over 24 hours bowling. To Raul yeah. Dravid, he was a, a phenomenal player, an absolute phenomenal player. Well, one of the greats of the game, one of the greats of all time for me, Raul Dravid. Another one that played along with Verinda in the World Eleven game. What a lovely human being um, Raul Dravid is. He didn't go into um, commentary after the after after test match after his test career had finished. He went into coaching. Tells you everything about Raul Dravid that he wants to give back. He wants to give his his knowledge, everybody you speak to have got nothing but great words to say about him. His ability to bat with tempo at the, the game's need. I thought he was he was a very, very good one-day player as well as a, a fantastic test match player. Got a lot of runs on on my on my debut and then you know subsequently went on. He had everything. He played all around the wicket. Um his temperament was fantastic. He's Ability to to play the long innings and concentration span was ridiculous, and he had every shot in the book. He was one of the one of the modern great players, and somebody uh, the, the, this the Test match game seems to have, have moved on and evolved on from because it's all crash bang wallop. Well, Raul could do that, but he could do it in a he just did it in a stylish stylish way. He was a top top player. We, of course, uh, covered the India series, didn't we, earlier this year. And Kevin Peterson, who was part of our team, um, told us a story about how Raul Dravid had actually helped him out with his defensive technique. He was getting out to uh, predominantly left-arm spin bowlers. And Raul Dravid just sent him a few notes about uh, how he should go around practising to get past the problem. Um, anybody who can give KP an a advice and KP listen to it and take it on board uh, just shows that, A, uh, he's got it. Uh, and B, as you say, he's going to be a terrific coach, possibly, probably the next India coach. Yeah, probably the next India coach. I would imagine once Ravi Shastri decides that his time of touring has is, is come, has come to either an end or he wants to slow down, and, and and you know the next man comes through. Don't think there'll be anybody better. Nobody better. Who would not want to listen to Raul Dravid? If Kevin Pearson can listen to Raul Dravid. You know, Raul Dravid can make anybody listen because KP listens to nobody. Unless yeah. KP's looking in the mirror, he listens to nobody. But Raul Dravid managed to get him to understand you know, the, how to play spin bowling, especially left arm spin. Um, and I think he'd be a he'd be a wonderful coach for for in the India cricket team moving forward. Okay, well, it's not KP coming in at four. Let's find out who it is.
Well, it's all about uh, the best batsman, isn't it, playing at four? Pretty much, pretty much. I know that there are uh, obviously some uh, who come in at three, but, you know, what can you say about bowling to Sachin Tendulkar that uh, hasn't been said a million times before? Absolutely, John. And this guy is the god. He's the god of cricket, and he is the god of cricket. I, I always said Ricky Ponting was one of the, the, probably the best player I played against. But for the game of cricket, it, it's all about Sachin. It's all about Sachin. The, the way the guy looked after himself, the way the man conducted himself in in and out of the cricket world, media, his private life. Everything about him was wonderful, and that's not even talking about his batting. His batting was <laughs> his batting was ridiculous. He could take a ball from outside of off stump and hit the ball anywhere he wanted. He just picked that bat up, and it was a heavy bat as well for somebody so small. It was a heavy bat. The game in Chennai, at the end of the game, when Yuvraj lifted him aloft, we came off after the chase, three hundred and sixty, and managed to win the game after the terrorist attack. I didn't know whether I wanted to cuddle him. I didn't know whether I wanted to punch him. I didn't know whether I wanted to just take him home to meet my mum and dad because the guy was just, he's just such a, he was, he, he was such, so humble in, and gracious in victory because once the euphoria had come that it, it came over, he came over and thanked every one of the England team for coming back to India after what had happened four or five weeks earlier and it was, that's the same before, nice nightmares, because it was all about making the country feel better. And Sachin, for every single one of his international days, all the way back from 1990, he made that country, he, made, he makes India feel good about themselves and he makes Indians feel good about themselves. And when you're on the field, you know when he's walking around it, you know when he's coming out to bat because the noise is just ridiculous. It is ridiculous. I remember a game, remember a game in Chennai, and Matt Pryor's trying to teach try, try to tell me to move because I've gone for a wonder. Sachin, Sachin's batting, and I'm 30 yards away from Matt Pryor, and he's sign language, and there's 65,000 people going mental. It is just such a, a, a it's a wonderful sight when Sachin's at the crease. Not great when you're bowling at him. Um, but when you are, when you're, you know you're in greatness, when you know you're in greatness, in 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 years, we're going to be talking about people that have played the game that are great. The likes of Black, what talk about Bradman and WG Grace now. I'm thinking of Shane Warne, I'm thinking of Matai Murathran, I'm thinking of Sachin Tendulkar will be high, high up on that list. Can't speak highly enough for the man as a person, and he was a phenomenal, phenomenal player. Okay, well, from a god to a prince. I was at Lords a few years back uh, when India were last here, and there was this uh, work experience guy, and uh, Surav Ganguly had asked him to go and make him a cup of tea or get one. I've never seen someone so terrified to get the tea wrong. In the end, I had to make it for him. I know how to make a good cup of tea, by the way. Um, but, you know, Surab Ganguly carries himself with an air of, of regalness. Um, he would be quite suited to a, a life at Buckingham Palace, I think. What was he like to bowl against? He was a difficult character to bowl against um, in test matches. I bowled against him a couple of times when he played for Lancashire. and He just wasn't interested. So that was that was a lot easier than what it was when he was playing for his national country, in his national badge on his, on his shirt. My test debut, I managed to bowl him for 99, which pleased a lot of people because Sarav, Rab, he, rubbed a, he rubbed a lot of people up the wrong way, did Sarav. Um, whether it was intentional or whether it was just the way, the way Sarav Ganguly, you know, carried himself off. But you talk about players, you know, the modern day batsman at the top of the order, being able to hit in power players. He had just a, a lovely style, a lovely manner. He'd be able, he's a birdie to time the ball, pick the ball up from from off from the offside to hit it onto the leg side, or from, to hit the ball inside out over the top of extra cover. He was a he was a very very good player and somebody who, in that in that middle order, he just accelerated the game away from you when he got going. And like I said before, ninety nine on my test debut, um, it was it was a one that made everybody chuckle and everybody happy from an English point of view and possibly around the world. Because sometimes when you do either dislike somebody or you have you know, a few choice words with, you do see like you do like to see them not quite get to the big milestone. But when you when it comes to 
admiration. And admiration now what he's doing for the game in India you know, in charge of the BCCI. Again, he is somebody who is looking to develop the game and make it a better game that we all love. OK, from one man who was run out or uh, rather given out for 99 to another man who was out for 99 against England. OK, I've gone early. I've gone early. I forgot about Yuvraj. How can I forget about Yuvraj Singh? <laughs> Yuvraj, was, it was an interesting one with Yuvraj because I, I was heads or tails. Do I go Yuvraj or Lakshman? Um, a lot of people will be watching this and see a Lakshman was a much better player. Just remember, this is the team I played against. I only played against it's, your, it's your list, Harm. It's your list. Yeah. I only played against Lakshman, I think, a couple of times. Um, and I played against him a couple of times in one-day cricket. But I think Yuvraj, in that Chennai game, proved what a you know, fantastic player he was. The one-day series leading into it, he kept hitting. We, I think we played in Bar I'm not sure if it was Baroda. Really short boundary, India chase 340, and 340 that time was a lot of runs. You know, we, we weren't even in the game, we weren't even in the game. He was hitting Freddie's low Yorkers, nearly full to low full tosses over the side screen for six, even though it was a small ground. He, this boy had talent, this boy had ridiculous talent. You know, he picked the bat up elegantly, looked at, looked to hit the ball. He had a swagger about him. I thought, I thought Yuvraj Singh was a, a lot better player than, than, than maybe he's average and he's. Any statistics look for looked uh, looked uh, at, but um, good stint in Yorkshire county cricket. I thought Yuvraj was a good good player, and he was. He, that's why he just shitted over Latchman for me at number six. Brilliant stuff. Okay, well you've been waiting for the man who was out for ninety nine. Here he comes. Okay, so you didn't actually play in the game he was run out for 99. It's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. But um, your careers, I guess, would have just about crossed over. Yeah, just about crossed over. He played, I think I think he played in the, the 2006 six series um, and then played against him in, in, in 2008. What can you say about Mahindra Singh Dhoni? I think the, the way he conducts himself, the way he carries himself, the way his leadership qualities are, are phenomenal. Um, as a player, he looked as though he was just not interested when he was keeping wicket. He looks as though he's the most uninterested wicket keeper that I've ever seen, but you very rarely see him drop a catch. When it was important, he didn't drop it. I think you, know, you, you throw you throw balls into him on the deep and he'd stop them with his pads. He'd look as though it, he, he looked as though he was an absolute shambles. But I tell you what, he didn't drop many catches. When they were there to catch, he caught them. He switched on just at the right time um, and his batting was brilliant. His batting was brilliant. He could take the game away from you when needed. He was very, very brave. Go hard at him. I remember a couple of times going hard at him, bouncing him you know, in, in many occasions just to try and ruffle the feathers and it would just let him hit his chest and he would stand there, big chested, head going forward. Uh, the, guy was a, the guy was a proper warrior. Um, and, and a leader that took over from, from Sarav Ganguly. He took over straight away from Sarav Ganguly. But that leadership quality that they both had um, stood in India in good in in, you know, in good stead for, for for years to come with with young players going through and speaking to a couple of people who have played alongside him in in Chennai and they just say what a, what a great man he is what a top man he is and yeah you know, that came across I must admit that came across didn't get a chance to speak too much to to many of the Indian players because they always seem to be sort of cut off from from the opposition in their own little bubble in their own little world but. Uh, Mahindra Singh Dhoni will go down as one of the all-time greats of the modern modern generation. OK, so we've had the bowl, uh, batsman, we've had the wicketkeeper. Let's get on to the bowlers. So let's talk about Anil Kumble. For me, the only story or anecdote I've got is that uh, in the 2009 World Cup, the World T20, uh, Anil Kumble bought me a curry. That's it. That's my only story about uh, Anil Kumble. I'm guessing your stories are a little bit better than that. Yeah, I've got them in my team because anybody that can get 10 wickets in innings in a test match and 100 in a test match is a phenomenal cricketer. And he was. He's unbelievable. He was the ability to not do what your brain's telling you to do to Anil Kumble was the hardest part probably about facing him. Yeah, you know, I was number 11. So you're telling yourself not, you know, the top order batsman, telling yourself not to cut him, 
not to cut him when he drags it down because it just goes flat and goes straight on. And then by the time they've decided that they're going to cut him, the stumps are everywhere and they've been bowled. He was just a phenomenal, he was a great, great cricketer, um, great leader, um, good coach when he's, when he, when he managed to, to sort of, to get him, get the job. He, he was somebody that conducted himself very, very well, very feisty. If I remember being on the field, he was a, he was a competitor. He would be in, he, he was not massively in your face, but he, you, you knew you were in a contest with him. The, the chest came towards you. And then when you bowled at him, he wasn't somebody that backed away. You could get one or two bounces around the around the sort of round the helmet mark and you feel as all right, I'm in with a chance here now. We could intimidate him. You couldn't really do that when Anil he he was he was brave. He got stuck in. Um and he was somebody who he was a, a true warrior, true competitor for, for, for the Indian Indian cricket team. But like I say, the bag of wickets that he's got, you know, six hundred test wickets. And that tells you everything. He is a proper, proper legend. Well, uh, any Indian side is probably going to have two spinners in your eleven. You know, it's a bit of a different um, state of affairs nowadays, of course. But uh, uh, you talk about competitors. Well, this guy was a huge competitor. Uh, was he? Uh, was he as? Uh, uh, I suppose as. He comes came across as quite a mouthy individual uh, to go with all that ridiculous talent. He must have been uh, quite a handful, especially when it was his day. Yeah, when if you go up, if you go back to what Australia when Tim Payne with Australia said, "I can't wait to get you back to Australia." I can't remember who that was for. There was many times a lot of bowlers said that to Harbajan. A lot of times, a lot of bowlers when Harbajan came out to bat. More often than not, you got an old ball can't. He sort of can't do too much intimidation, um, and with a ball, with a bat, he would belt you. When you got in favourable conditions, you, 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 as a bowler and a quick bowler, you were going right. I'm not going to try and get you out for about four or five balls. I'm going to try and get you. I'm going to try and get you because you know, you're annoying. You know, you pull your cut. He's a competitor, and he, he, yeah, he would, he would back his corner, should we say? And, and but with a ball, he was fantastic. He was absolutely brilliant with the ball. You look at Cumberland at one end and Harbajan at the other end. And you know, fast forward a few years later when, when England went to India and won. I think the difference was the two spin balls. If Harbajan and Cumberland play, it's a different game. Uh, this guy was a this guy was a, an excellent cricketer. He was a competitor. There was a challenge on everything, and he questioned everything that other people did. I'd imagine it'd be a nightmare as a teammate if you misfielded or dropped a catch, because he was he was always at you. That was just the way he was. Uh, I don't think there was too much malice in it. I just think he was, he was one of these, he's a bit like Peterson. He was, he was Kevin Peterson. He was somebody who, his mouth was probably three seconds quicker than his brain. And it, it just came out. And then all of a sudden, you know, he worked, he worked around, worked around, you know, his thought process was worked around after that. But take nothing away from Harbidjan. He bowled with Cumbler. And there was a, a lot of talk about Cumbler being the leader. This, this this guy was as good, if not not if not better than Cumbler. Um, he was a, he was a proper prop, and he was dangerous with a bat as well. But he was a proper proper bowler. I like the fact that you talk about MS Dhoni about trying to hit him in the chest, and he took it. You talked about trying to bounce out Cumbler and hit him in the chest, and he took it. And that seemed to be your uh, go to method against Harbhajan Singh. Um, okay, up to now, I've been totally on board with the players uh, that you selected, but. Of all the 11, the one that surprised me the most is coming up now. So tell us about why Munaf Patel is uh, in your uh, top 11. He, we played against Munaf Patel in a, in a warm-up game and we managed, obviously we managed to get him in the side. And he, for me, was as, as good a right-arm line ball as I'd, I'd seen. The, um, Mohammed, is it Mohammed Asif, the... Pakistan bowler, literally six months earlier, did exactly the same same to England when uh, got in through a warm up game and then produced the goods when it came to mm. it. Again with the opening batsman, it was probably one place. The, the the two slots where you probably had three or four players who could come in for it. You know, I can think of Gambia at the, at the top of the order with Jaffa, but I can think of maybe Shrisanth or Ashish Nehra or uh, Ife and Patan. Um, to go, but I went with Munaf because I thought there was there was times in that in that series in 2006 where you know, he he just stuck to off stump and he he bowled beautifully he bowled beautifully and 
he didn't have the enthusiasm that Trinath had. Um, Erfan Patan, well, I, I just thought he was a better bowler. I just thought he was a class bowler. And I also thought when he comes he comes to England on you know, in English surfaces, he was he was a handful. But when I played against out of the ones I played against, I thought Munaf Patel was a was a very very good bowler. Not too dissimilar to what Javagal Srinath I managed to play against, play with Javagal in 2003, I think it was, for Durham. And what a man he is. What I, He was there for four games, and the education I got of Javagal Srinath, and it was probably, yeah, it was just after the 2003 World Cup. And the education I got just by talking to Javagal Srinath about sort of lengths the ball, where to sort of target pads, little, little subtleties with the seam. Um, and Munaf Patel for me was something similar to to what Jabagal Srinath was. Obviously not on that level and that scale for a long period of time. But I just thought that that Munaf Patel had a lot of ability. Um, and that's why I picked him in my 11. OK, well, one player to go. And there's no doubt whatsoever uh, who this person was and how important he was for India for so many years. I remember back in 2011, a couple of years after you retired, and India came to England as world number one. England needed to win that series 4-0 to replace them at the top of the tree, and they did so. Uh, not without some ridiculousness along the way. Stuart Broad hat-trick at Trent Bridge, I think. Um, but the biggest moment of that series was on the first day of the first test, Zahir Khan, who'd taken both the wickets to fall, um, walked off with a side strain, didn't see him again, and, and that was India's chances because back in those days, they only really had one absolute gun fast bowler um, and he was it. He definitely was it. What a bowler. Any India, any bowler that bowls in India, seam-wise, and that gets over 300 test wickets, has, has had a good career, a fantastic career, and he was a proper bowler, Zaya Khan. County cricket, he played a, a bit of county cricket and he was excellent over here with a... The, you know, the Duke ball swinging and seaming. But I thought his, his knowledge, his ability to move you across the um, across the crease as a, from a batting point of view, um, he was a fantastic, he was an unbelievable bowler. And again, when you go back to the, the Munaf Patel one, do you go with that? Ashish Nira, who was a good left-arm seamer. Patan was a good left-arm seamer. But there was only one left-arm seamer. And that was that was Aya Khan. Funny man, top man, you know, a good sense of humour. Um, and, and somebody I enjoy playing cricket against. Uh, didn't play a great deal against him, but he was he was a he was a he was a champion for India. And like I said before, three hundred Test match wickets as a seam bowler he can swing the ball both ways. He could make the ball a little bit like Jimmy Anderson. He didn't really need the surface to get the ball to move laterally. Um, and anybody that can do that from a skill level is uh, is hats off. Brilliant stuff. Harmi, it's been lovely listening to uh, you uh, go through. I mean, what you've played with and against some absolutely incredible uh, individuals and uh, some absolute legends of uh, not just Indian cricket, but cricket in general. So uh, absolutely brilliant. And I hope the viewers enjoyed it too. I know we have a bit of rain in England, um, but the forecast slightly better uh, for the next few days. And of course, there is that reserve day in place. This could be a six day test. So um, look, if it is raining again, we may dip into some more of the vaults and uh, just pick Harmy's brain, a New Zealand 11 maybe, a composite one. Uh, but for now, if you got this far, please subscribe, uh, review, like. And myself and Harmy will be back on uh, 7 for 12, following play every day of the English summer, including this, the World Test Championship.